Hey guys, so I know I've been getting some questions on our uh, assignment for today, so I wanted to kind of go through it with you guys and help you out. Uh, so I'm just going to go through the directions and kind of give you an example of each part so that if you're having a hard time, you can um, refer to this video. So in the landscape tab, you're going to click on the hum the woman's head to choose the human neuron sample. Then you're going to use the microscope to observe the samples listed in the table below. Here's your table. There was a typo in this table, which is causing it to be confusing. So it should only say estimated size in this column. The rest of these are the things you might find in the cell. These are your organelles or your specialized structures. They are called both things, okay? That can be confusing too. So what you're basically gonna do is you're gonna look at the human neuron, you're gonna measure the size of the cell, then you're going to see, okay, if it has a cell membrane, you're gonna put an X in this box. If it has a nucleus, put an X in the box. If it has a cytoplasm, put an X in the box. If it has anything else that is listed there, write it in this box that says special structure. So we're gonna do this one together. So human neuron. So we're gonna go to the landscape. We're gonna find the neuron, the lady's head, okay? We're gonna put that neuron under our microscope. We're gonna zoom it in. Oh, that made it more blurry, blurry, blurry. And now it's clearing up. Remember, make it in focus. Get it as clear as you can. All right, right about there looks good. And now you're gonna magnify it. And the first thing you're going to do, like I already have the labels turned on, so now I can tell this is my cell, and this is a cell, it looks a little different, right? It has these little leg things on it. We haven't seen that in cells before. Um, but we're gonna still measure the width, so we need to turn on the show scale bars. Again, I like to kind of move it so that ah, so that you can kind of gauge it. So if this whole black line is 20, I would say it's about half of that black line, right? So it's about 10 UM. So you're gonna go back to your document and you're gonna type in 10 UM. Now, let's take a look at the parts that this cell has. So now I'm gonna get rid of that and I'm gonna turn on the labels. Look at that, we have a whole bunch of parts. Do we have a nucleus? Yes. Oh, sorry, cell membrane is first. Do we have a cell membrane? Yes, we do. We also have a nucleus. We can go back here and we can check. We have a cell membrane. Just put an X in the box. We have a nucleus. And do we have a cytoplasm? Oh, look at that, we do. So we're gonna put an X in that box. And then there are some other structures in here. So let's go back and see. Well, we have an axon, so we're gonna type that in. Oh, not an axon, an axon. And we also have, oh, it's, it's cut off and I can't read it. So what am I gonna do? Well, I'm gonna slide to the right, right? Move to the right. All right, so we have a dendrite. I know, you guys think I'm crazy, right? All right, dendrite. And that's it. Now we're done with the human neuron. We're gonna go do the same thing with the human skin, the human muscle, the human blood. Now guys, it tells you where these things are. So here's the skin, here's her blood, and here's the muscle, okay? So you're gonna do those, same exact thing on those. Now, let's go to the next part. The next part says observe human skin. Okay, to observe human skin, what am I gonna do? Here's the directions. On the landscape tab, select the human skin sample. Easy enough. On the microscope tab, choose the 400 magnification, focus on the sample, and turn on the show labels. Click on each label. If necessary, adjust the stage sliders to see the full description. Answer the questions below. Oh look, I have three questions to answer. What is the function of the nucleus? What is the function of the cytoplasm? What is the function of the cell membrane? Okay, so I'm gonna go get the human skin and put it on the microscope. So here is my human skin. I'm gonna put it on my microscope. Gonna zoom it in. Okay, 
make it even clearer and zoom it in. Okay, there we go. Now it said that I need to <laughs> click on each label and read the full description and answer the questions. So the first question, what is the function of the nucleus? So look, look guys, if I click on nucleus, there is the description. Now if this was hidden, I can move it, remember, so that I can see it. So it says the nucleus contains the cell's DNA. The nucleus controls the cell by regulating when genes are turned on and off. So that's what I need to type right here for what is the function of the nucleus. The nucleus contains the DNA and keep going right in the function. You're going to do the same thing for cytoplasm, the same thing for the cell membrane. So when you click on it, it'll show you. All right, now we're going to go to the next part. It says human neuron. Well, what are we going to do to observe the human neuron? We're going to, from the landscape tab, select human neuron by clicking on the lady's head. Under the microscope tab, focus the cell at 400 times and turn on show labels. Click on the axon label to read the description. What is its function? So this is very similar, right, to what we just did, except we're going to do it with the neurons in the head. This time we're going to find out the function of the axon. Here it is. And remember, if I am having a hard time seeing it, I can move it up, move it down. A long projection that carries electrical signals away from the cell body. So that's what I need to type out over here. It carries the electrical signals from the body. Okay, type it in there. Then you do the same for the dendrite. This is just information that you should just read. It's to help you. It says neurons transmit messages in the form of electrical and chemical signals through axons and dendrites from one part of the body to another. Okay, next thing we're gonna do, observe human muscle. So from the landscape tab, we're gonna select the human muscle by clicking on the lady's leg. We're gonna zoom it to 400 and we're gonna turn on show labels. So we'll do that. We're gonna get the leg muscle. We're gonna focus it. Hey, it looks kind of like the fly muscle did yesterday, doesn't it? Do you notice that similarity? I don't know, it's kind of blurry for me. Hold on. All right, now I've got my labels on. I'm ready to answer the question. The question said, what do muscle cells have that other cell types do not? Hmm, what do you guys see in here? We have nucleus, yeah, we all have those. Cytoplasm, yep, we all have those. Cell membranes, yep, so there's only one left. What is it? Write it in, okay? And then you're gonna read what it does. So just click on it and it will tell you, oh, but I can't see it, so what do I do? I slide it over, right? Okay, all right. Next thing you do is compare red and white blood cells. So you're going to select the human blood sample. See how I'm doing this? This is what I'm doing. This is how I do it. These are the questions. Under the microscope, focus it, and then look under the show information. Oh, this is different. Look under show information on the right-hand side of the gizmo. Okay, so we're gonna get our blood sample. Blood, focus it. Magnify it, show the labels. All right, but now it said we have to look over here. Here's the show information. When you click this, it comes up. Now it gives you information about red blood cells and white blood cells. And you're gonna use that to help you answer these questions. The function of the red blood cells, the function of the white blood cells, and what organelle is missing from the red blood cells. So you're gonna have to take a look at those red blood cells and see what's missing. All right, then we're gonna do a compare of human and animal samples. So first you're going to get the human skin, you're gonna magnify it, you're going to, um, then you're gonna look at the mouse skin, magnify it. You're just kind of looking at these guys. So look at the human skin, look at the mouse skin. What do you notice? Look at the human and the worm neurons. What do you notice? Look at the human and the fly muscle. 
look at the human and the frog blood. And you're just making some generalizations. In general, are there any major differences that you see? Explain. What organelle do frog red blood cells have that the human red blood cells do not? And then it gives you some information. This is just information for you to read, okay? Finally, you're gonna do plants and unicellular life. So you're gonna to go to the microscope tab and select microalgae sample. And then you're gonna do this. Okay, so this part, you don't need to draw these in your document. I know you guys cannot draw in here. So I would just, as you look at them, draw them on paper. Make these on a piece of paper so you can make a sketch for yourself because then you can compare your sketches to answer these three questions, okay? So I'm not gonna look if you drew anything in here, but for yourself, you should draw these out on a piece of paper so that you are learning and you can go, oh, what did they all have in common? And answer the question, okay? Finally, you're gonna do uh, question D. How are the algae cells different from the other cells? And then you're going to do number two, which other samples in the gizmo do you think represent unicellular organisms? And then you're going to observe, so switch to the protist sample. Protists are unicellular organisms common in ponds. On the microscope tab, select the 100 time radio button and focus the image. Watch the motion of the protolist at 100 and 400. What structures allow each protolist to move? Okay. Then you're going to um, you're going to do that with the amoeba, with the iglina, and the paramecium. So here's the organism. What structure allows it to move? So let's look this up. I'll help you guys with this one. So amoeba. Let's go find the amoeba. Okay, so the amoeba are, all of these are going to be found in here, the protists. So you're going to click on that, protists, and then here they are. Ooh, look at that, they're moving around in there. So we're going to zoom in, I'm going to focus this thing in, there we go. Get it as clear as we can, and then we're going to start to zoom in. And now watch, if you have your labels on, you got to move it. There's your amoeba. You can move it down this way. There's your paramecium. And then you move it up. There's your iglina. All right. And you can slide that over to see the whole thing. Look at its little tail. All right. So you're going to look at these and you're going to answer for the amoeba. What is the structure that allows it to move? For the iglina, what structure allows it to move? And for the paramecium, which structure allows it to move? How are you going to tell? Remember, if you click on the structures, they're going to give you a definition here. It's a thin, long, thin, whip-like cell structure that rotates around, allowing the organism to swim. So this is the part, the flagellum, that allows this organism to move. So you're looking for the part that lets it move. All right, finally, number four, you're going to compare. On the landscape tab, click on the cow to switch to the E. coli sample. On the microscope tab, select 2,500 times, focus the image, and turn on show labels. You're going to find two structures that help E. coli move and describe them below. So you've got to look for two things that help the E. coli move and then answer this question, okay? All right, guys, I hope that helped, that um, if you were having some trouble with this, that that was helpful. Um, do the best you can and work through it. This is a learning experience for you to do some hands-on um, type things and discover about these cells.